live. Woohoo! We're live. We're live. Come on over and join us. Come on over to my place. Yeah, Come on, we're having a party. party. Come and join us on YouTube. Hello, everyone. Sorry guys. about that. If you've tuned in for a very meaningful review of the virtues, you don't <laughs> want us blithering away like that. Hello and good evening and hello. Suddenly went into news news readers. News speak. reading. Hello, I'm Jasmine. Let me just pull up the. Uh, I'm just pulling up the live feed of your comments here. Uh, dear Kiki's coming to say good night. Hey, sweetie. Nighty night. All right, baby. Night night. Sleep tight. Sleep tight. Um, here we go. I can see you all. Good evening, Karen. Hey, Leah. Hi, Kim. Nadia isn't being rude. She's just on the phone. I've just had a bit of a situation because uh, ID that? World have just texted me and said, you keep saying it's seven o'clock and it's nine o'clock the show tomorrow. Oh. So if you're... If you... Seven and nine. I... No, it's nine and 11. It's my fault. Oh. It's all my fault. So it's 9 and 11, not 7 and 11. Ah. So I've just got to amend that. Okay. So just, Mark, you kick off. Just amending. So did anyone else sit down to tune in and watch The Virtues? Um, Channel 4, Stephen Graham, who is one of my favourite, favourite character actors. Has anyone seen it? I'm going to have to get my glasses. I literally can't see. Um, hello. Yes, it was sad but slow. Right, it was slow. And here's the thing. In this very televisual age where everything's rapid, 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 cut to the chase of the story, I agree it was challengingly slow at times. But I think it's important that there is the option to have dramas every now and then that don't go at breakneck speed. Oh, God. I mean, I... I like... Yeah, what scene. I love is... What I love, I love to just... When I'm watching any kind of drama, whether it's, you know, on telly or in the theatre, I love to get into the skin of the person. Character. And sometimes, I think when you get something really slow... Well, slow is almost the wrong word. I don't know. What would be a better one? It's not languid. It's... What's another word for slow? Um, it's sort of... Because slow is kind of negative, but I get what you mean. It is slow, but it's... It was, it was all-encompassing, wasn't it? Can't we think just, of a word. Can't think no. of a word. I, don't, I mean, the pace I thought it, it was contemplative. Yeah. I thought it allowed, contemplative. I thought it allowed that you to contemplate word. what was going on. That was a word. Sometimes, when you're writing scripty stuff, and all these playwrights and scriptwriters and television program makers, they think they have to fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it with dialogue and plot development. And I made some interesting notes here. The first entire part of the whole film or yeah. program tonight was him walking up a road, going to a semi-detached house, and saying goodbye to his son. That was it. And I thought within that, we had a remarkable amount of characterization, drama, emotion, and uh, setting up of the story. Now, what do and people... Also it told what do, us a lot. Yeah, told us a lot he, about him. Yeah. I, think, I think in the quieter moments, we were just learning so much, because so much of what we find out about Basim is what they don't say as much as what they do exactly, say, don't Exactly, exactly. And I think some, some of the greatest acting performances are about what's not said. I remember yeah. directing a film uh, a while back and the, the lead actor said, you don't mind, dear boy, if I strip out 95% of your words, do you? <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 absolutely not. And he was right. So sometimes it's about less dialogue and it's about more, you know, um, more sort of, it's not just facial expressions, but it's just, you know, more being in the scene and being i love that did anyone what did what do people think is happening first do, do apologize maybe we'll, we'll be with us in a sec um what well, do we've just explained it because i haven't tweeted to oh, say I see, alive, sorry. Oh, okay. to rude. no no it just must seem odd because you're looking I'll just off screen. explain that um what do people think is happening to stephen graham anyone got i, can't, I literally can't see Contemplative, perfect description. I can't remember the last show that gave me the opportunity to get inside the characters. Yeah, and I'll tell you what was even better about this was you, you weren't even really allowed to get too far inside his head because you were, I don't know if anyone else felt, you were guessing so much all the way through this. You were guessing so much from the, from the beginning. I mean, it wasn't clear that at first it, is, it was his son. You know, so many shows, I think, point you in the direction of what you should be thinking and what is going on. And I like a show that just lets you, drops you in the middle of it and you're like, hang on a minute, fucking hell, I've got to work out what the hell's going on with this guy. Right from scene one when they were in the van, and I loved it, the guy going on about how his wife wants to breastfeed and now she's killing him and all of this. I just thought that was everything that I expected to happen. It was very counterintuitive. Whatever I expected, the opposite happened. Yeah. Right the way through, right to the end. Mm. So, so when we were at the dinner and when we, you know, 
when they're all sitting around the table, I realised fairly quickly that it was probably his son. I started to think, oh my God, it's his son. Yeah. So I was expecting a big blow up between the stepfather and the ex, and the ex. Yeah. And I didn't get it. Yeah. Then I was expecting him to be a bad parent and say the wrong things when he upstairs bedroom. And he was really sensitive, And he didn't. He? he was sensitive and mm. kind. I expected it to blow up with the girlfriend out on the step, and it didn't. It yeah. was kind. It was meaningful. Yeah. There was so much said between those two without saying anything. Absolutely. I mean, my like, God, that scene on the doorstep. I know. And then when he went to the pub, all the way through, I was waiting for the fight. He's going to have a fight in the pub. This is going to kick off with all these drunks there. He's going to get into a fight. And, and it wasn't until almost at the end I started thinking, oh my God, you realise how so much drama is so predictable. Well, and I just said to myself, stop trying to predict it, sit with it, because and this, this is, is going to surprise us all the way through. Totally agree. And what was really interesting was Maddie, our 16 year old, was watching it and she kept just pulsating throughout it saying, this is really good, using kind of much younger language than that. This is really good. I really like the way it's leaving it to us. I really like the way it's not steering us to where we're going. Yeah. And I do think we fall foul with a lot of, I mean, and I say this, like there's a lot of good drama, there's a lot of good drama on telly that, um, that, uh, that does steer you and it does it well. It's a real skill to steer it, but to, to, to steer you and, and direct you. But sometimes, sometimes, it's really nice to just have a, I think, a drama which just allows you to just feel your way around. I mean, that, that's how I describe this. We just felt our way around a, a character portrait, didn't we, of this mm. guy. I, I mean, you love our improvisational stuff, don't you? The improvisational stuff around the table with the boys. I, I don't like, I often hate improvisation because it sticks out oh, like right, a sore thumb. But I did really like, I thought it was really, really well done. I thought it was it so was well done. So well done. I mean, he is. Something else. Stephen well, every Graham. one of the actors was just. And of course, Stephen Graham was, re was recently in, in the line of duty. I think he was the undercover. Oh, yeah. So God, undercover cop that he was killing that? people. The only way we saw that was through Gogglebox, which is so yeah. annoying because it was obviously utterly brilliant. We now, missed out on a corker there. One thing that this, this episode did show us was a man who's clearly an alcoholic. His ex partner obviously knew he was an alcoholic. Asked him if he was going to be all right, and we watch a man relapse. And we, I have to say, the way did anyone, what did anyone think of part two, the scene in the pub? And there we are. Nicola Caro says the oh pub scenes god. were brilliant. The pub scenes were so stressful. Oh my god! But didn't so it make, real. Didn't it make every one of you that's ever been drunk more than you should have just cringe oh, at the absolutely. thought of that feeling? But do you know what I loved about him? I loved the way he started drinking, and then he was so alone. You remember that first shot? He was just oh, sat there, he was just so alone. That. Oh my and God, then his slow, his slow drinking and slowly getting drunk, he suddenly, he was fortified to then mm. connect and then he wanted to sort of distract from himself. I thought he played that brilliantly, the idea that he wanted to distract from the sadness of his son going off to Australia. And Dolly Daydream says oh it was God. scaring me, yeah. him in the pub. We were like that. We, were just, we had a high anxiety. Because I kept thinking, he's going to get in a fight, he's chatting up these birds, he's going to... I love mm. that he didn't. it didn't end the way it thought. Exactly. I didn't think he was going to be able to pay when the yeah, landlord yeah, said, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah, man, you got yeah, to give yeah. me the money. I thought he was going to get smashed up. Yeah. No, he was just swerving like car crashes all the way through the night, wasn't he? And then when they... And then when all the drunk guys took him off at the end and they were just being kind, yeah, it never yeah, yeah. turned. I think this for me was a was a was really a drama as well about the kindness in people as well. Yeah. Don't I you agree. didn't you think? Yeah, yeah. Well I thought but, but the horror that is running underneath all is what is he going to Belfast for? I'm convinced this is horrible child abuse. Well, I heard an interview. The, di the one thing we haven't said is this is directed by Shane Meadows, who's like one of our best directors, who had some, I think he's had some kind of breakdown and gone into sort of creative hiding. He, he directed This Is England. He did movies like Dead Man Walking, um, Romeo Brass, stuff like that. He's, he's made some cracking films. Um, Welcome, Sophie Hudson. But I think this is based on Shane Meadows' own experiences from his childhood. Oh, is it? Um, and Shana I, I, Mackay, we're talking about the yeah. virtues, a drama out on Channel 4. And I'm not going to say too much more because I, I kind of know more than I'm um, letting on. Um, I'm scared about what I'm going to What did see. you think of that? What did you think of that scene where they had the chess cam attached to him and he was walking through oh! the night? And then I thought... It was well, too much. It was, it was too, too, much. too much, but good too much. It reminded me, there's a very famous scene in a, a Scorsese film called Mean Streets where they attached a camera to Har I think it was Harvey Keitel's mm. character and he's walking Maddie around and it's that, very effective because it puts you right in the face of the guy. 
And then, of course, they started to slip in. I think it was braver in. points, because yeah. at points he really did hold the thing. I didn't really understand the poem that was going on, sort of half poem. Well, it was a priest. It was a sermon. Oh. There we go. It was a sermon. There we and, go. Yeah. It's, it's going to be child abuse. Yeah. And I think he's heading back to Ireland. I mean, is that a photo of his parents, do you think? Because they're young girls, aren't they, in those no, photos? No, I think it's boys? something to do with wherever he was being kept, at an orphanage or something. Yeah. Mm. Apparently, it, Stephen got really Dolly upset Daydreams, it was just like the video for Smack My Bitch Up. You're absolutely right, by The Prodigy. Years ago, I did a piss take of that, where I attached a, a chest cam to my chest and I went clubbing for the entire night. It was mm. so good. I thought it was so effective the way it did it, and I thought it was so effective because, you, again, like Nadia says, all the I thought he was going to get beaten up or he was going to end up in a fight. Yeah. But he didn't. He got home. And, and, and then you've you got that carnage that's going on in your head I when you're too drunk. I almost wanted him to be dead. Is that awful? I know I what you mean. I just thought... But oh I think that's God, how most alcoholics the feel. The horror was so horrific. I just wanted him not to be dead. I wanted him to have peace mm. because I thought, this is not going to heal. Obviously, you've had a horrific something happen to you as a child. You've lost your child that you love so much. It's been taken away to Australia forever. Yeah. You are a hopeless alcoholic. Yeah. Awful things are going to happen to you. I just want you to sleep forever. Watching this program is like jumping out of a plane without a parachute because you're not going to be helped into landing. So you've just no. got to go with it. Skydive, man, with this. Because Stephen Graham takes you there. Someone just Maybe said that maybe, maybe want a kebab. I know what I you know mean. What you mean. <laughs> I felt a bit kebabby. I wanted a kebab at one point. You made we it look really nice. I wanted to sober up. I wanted, I wanted you and I want a kebab. Yeah, like yeah, that need yeah. to like sober up. Yeah, it was a bit close up on his sick for my liking, was it? Yeah, yeah. a bit too long it was, on the sick. A bit too, and it looked a bit too but like you know, chicken tikka masala. You know what? Why I was a bit upset about the sick was not because because I don't mind sick, but I thought, oh, don't leave the sick there too long because people will turn off. Will turn off. Now, oh God, look! The marks on his back <gasps> made me think, think of, of birching. birching. What? So he'd done it himself. Oh. Maybe that's what happened to him in the priesthood. Ah, that happened to my granddad. What a good spotting. Yeah. Cherry Song One, yeah, very yeah. good spotting. No. Uh, do we like Stephen Graham, Lydia Ellen? Oh my God. Oh my God. God. He, Shane Meadows is best be Stephen so Graham. proud Meadows, of him. Proud of him as a British actor. And what I love about him, he was on The One Show recently, I'm and I don't often watch The One Show, and he is still saying, I'm so grateful for these parts. Well, He's got what. really upset apparently in some of the interviews just talking about the character. Apparently yeah. he was tear crying on the a... Lorraine or something, right, he, was, yeah. he was crying. No, he's a very, he's a very, I mean, he's an astonishing Deep. actor. And like Deep. he says, he often gets cast playing drug dealers and drug takers and psychos and skinheads. And this is a sort of departure. And I think it's quite clever. Do we clever. know if he's ever been a psycho before, drinker? What, in real life? Mm. I'm sure everyone's had a little bit of that in the showbiz world, don't you think? No, of course yeah. not. You can't make a sweeping statement I like think that. everyone's had a bit. I'm sure, if he's hung out with Shane Meadows and, and uh, Paddy Considine oh, yeah. and all that lot, I'm Lydia sure he's had Ellen, a bit of it. Lydia I'm from Liverpool. I'm so proud to be from where... For, because from there, of him. because of him. And because of your wonderful actress from... Killing Eve. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't oh realise she was... Oh, my God. Anyway, this is She's already so one of my good. early... You know, we missed the bloody TV BAFTAs the other night. We should have been live. Mm. Jodie Comer won a BAFTA. Oh. Um, I think this is... I, I think that his portrait of alcoholism was phenomenally on point. I oh, thought he was that, an ex-alcoholic. Oh, he is an ex-alcoholic. is he? Oh, right. Oh, there ah. you go. Because I was going to say, it was just totally in his mm. eyes, in his face, in his fingers... Oh, love me, Pop. I know what you mean. She says, I was so proud he didn't slap the guy selling the ferry ticket. Yes. Again, we had, yeah, yes, we were true. all making predictions yeah. all the way through. I could not be. And then I thought he was going to drink yeah. the cider. I thought there's no yeah, way. And he's paid 130 yeah. quid. And he hasn't got a car and he's got a cabin. And then when we saw him in the cabin, just clean and nice yeah. and just looking at the photo. Yeah. It was constantly Kept wrong footing us. Wrong footing us. And I love Every it for that. Every minute of the day. Every minute of the day. Yeah. But you did, you kept saying people will turn off. Well, because I think, I think too many people would have thought it was too slow. People, like mm. you say, were used to just everything being given as a quick fix. Mm. I think people would have been repulsed. People mm. would have been made too sad. But you know what? Well done, not. Channel 4, yes. for putting it out Thank anyway. God. Because we have to have stuff on that's challenging and maybe lose some viewers because exactly. There's, some look, of us want Here's it. the thing. Broadcasters need to provide all things for all people. And if a lot of people are watching The Bodyguard and enjoying it, 
we enjoyed parts of it, we got taken on that ride, that's great. But also provide stuff that isn't quite so taking you by the hand and walking you around the streets of the story. Mm. I thought this was, mm. I just thought this allowed us just to really indulge in some class acting. Mm. Class acting. Sinbad from Brookside, of course he was. Uh, that's who he was. Of course he bloody it was. He was driving me mad. He was very yes, good. he was brilliant Ashley in Gardner, that. Ashley Gardner, just finished work. Hi Ashley, bleeding hey, Ashley. Ashley. Missed it, so I'll have to catch up. Working yeah, it's late very tomorrow. good, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, are you going to this morning? We'll see, are you do, seeing Late Loose? Might see you there, Ashley. Do you think he's on a one-way mission? My feeling is he's not on a mission that he's going to come back from. I feel he feels his son's on the other side of the planet. He's going to Belfast to sort some shit out. It's clearly from his childhood. It probably involves his parents too. And I think he's not planning on coming back. I absolutely agree. Do I you? think this is a suicide mission. Do you? Oh, a yeah. suicide mission? I don't. Not, I don't think he's consciously thinking, I'm going to go there and I'm going to kill myself. But I think he's he's so lost. I feel he's suicidal without I think, knowing, subconsciously suicidal. What? Well, you know no, 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 no. He say, does alcoholism. People... I say it all the Listen, time. Alcohol... he was suicidal the night he went out to that pub and did all say, of that. I was going to say, alcoholism is the behaviour of people who would like yeah. to commit suicide but can't do it. I mean, he was putting himself in terrible situations, mm. lying there being sick. I mean, he was definitely suicidal. Mm. I mean, mm. what was the point? He lost his son. Uh, I thought the music, and a big shout out to the music. I thought the music was sort of not in your face, but it was there at the right times. Mm. It was shot brilliantly. And I love the fact, again. It was a story about a real father's love. Yeah. Because when he was sitting there hearing his son talk about the school and how the good education and this and that, and he knew the best thing was to just let him go and say, mm. be your best. And I love the fact that a good drama doesn't have to have loads of bells and whistles attached to it. Each part of this episode was a very simple scene. It you had was. a very scene and, and I a part. I love that we didn't have to have You had a bedroom. Sex. No, no graphic sex. You, had, you didn't need any great long plot developments. Yeah. It's just very bloody simple. Yeah. And make a virtue, <laughs> see what I did there? Make a virtue of the audience not knowing what's going on. The song was Beneath the Rose, says Carlos Rodriguez. Beneath the Rose. Oh, good. I'll tell Maddie because she loved the music. Self medicating, the sun going as a catalyst for him to face his past. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes exactly. Cherry song one. And when he drinks, for a minute it plugs the hole, but like all drink, it then resurrects the problem. Yeah. That's what drink and, does. And that was what we saw in the pub, wasn't it? Yeah. And he was just happy and he was had people and he was so desperate and he wanted to keep buying everyone drinks so they could all just stay together and feel safe and oh, break your heart. Oh, Kelsey right. says it made her want to cry, but she's thinking about watching it again tomorrow. Yeah, I know Kelsey, what you mean. you're weird. <laughs> you can tell Shane Meadows is a filmmaker, can't you? Yeah. Rather than a TV series maker i mean he, yeah. it's a film it's kind of got the pacing and the and the, and the heft of the film anyway so i would fully anyway, recommend it we're recommend looking forward to it. episode two we'll be reviewing it stephen graham you rock and i feel like i've got a bit of a man crush on oh. stephen graham yeah oh, sorry guys one. yeah even with sick on him please subscribe to the yeah. channel guys please tell your friends about our channel there's so much going on it we put a lot of hard work into it we love our channel we love to spread the word